Ryan here. Thanks for dropping by and welcome to my channel where I talk about eye-catching art and people-centered politics. And as you can gather from the title, this will be my very first unboxing video, but um, it's not going to be a typical unboxing video as you would expect it to be. Curious? Keep on watching to find out more. Okay, before I begin, I want to tell you about the artist that inspired me to make this unboxing video. This is Kim Jung Gi, a Korean visual artist and a master of illustration and comics. Along with his collaborations illustrating storybooks with a number of authors, his vast visual works have been published as numerous sketchbooks containing hundreds of drawings and ink paintings and are widespread and celebrated all over the world. Most of us are familiar with manga as Japanese comics, but Jungi, of course being Korean, is especially known for Hangul Manhwa, that is, Korean comics. He starts out thinking of his drawings as being inside of boxes, having a height, width, and depth, and this really simplifies how any given subject might be drawn and seen from a certain perspective in a 3D space. Look at Jungi's images. Wild, right? His fantastical art shows dynamic perspectives and is a genius in drawing from memory and imagination, but he explains that his works are really a combination of fantasy and observed reality. As he experiences the world around him, Jun Gi creates a visual encyclopedia in his mind and in his sketchbooks, really paying attention to how things look in reality and might look in any imagined angle, perspective, lighting, distance, etc. Let's hop on my Instagram and look at a draft I made for a mural design. Using Junki's technique helped me tremendously in this jam-packed scene by first simplifying the components as boxes to simplify perspective, depth, dimension, and scale before unboxing them into their specific forms, shapes, and details. If you want to learn more about this technique and see more of Junki's incredible art, check out this video by Proko titled How to Draw Like Kim Junki, and I've also put a link for it in the description down below. To start, I'm just deciding on the point of view and here I'm using a rectangular 3D box. I think I'm going to establish a pretty low point of view and for comparison's sake, I will draw a second box with a higher point of view where we can see the top. Okay, so within the boxes, I can now begin to key in the simple shapes that would make up the figure and this way I can understand their dimensions easier too. Then I start to look at proportions. This would mostly matter if I were to be drawing a more naturalistic figure, but since my figure is quite cartoonish, I am proportioning the oval head to be unnaturally large relative to the body. After setting the perspective, keying in the parts of the figure as simple shapes and looking at proportions, I then begin to focus on connecting the parts together and refining contours while conforming to the dimensions of the box. Here, for example, I heed special attention to the horizontal levels of the eyes and opening of the mouth to parallel and conform to the angle of the horizontal line of the top of the box. From here, I can focus on the smaller things like textures, shading, and other minute details. All in all, I go by a pattern where I look at the general things I previously mentioned, then worry about the particular things. Y you get the idea. we have a dotae, and if you're not a Tagalog speaker, maybe I owe you an explanation regarding what a dotae is. Basically, it's a play on the Philippine president Rodrigo Duterte's name combined with the Filipino word for excrement or feces, which is tae, and together they make up dotae, which is rather witty and appropriately reflects Duterte's policies and actions. Even before the pandemic, Duterte's presidency has been defined by deep corruption, extreme repression of the people, complete incompetence, and violent killings. He is infamous for being a misogynist and jokes about women getting raped on a regular basis. Most notoriously, he is known for heavily inciting a shoot-to-kill policy on suspected criminals, which had very real, gruesome, and tragic consequences on his war on drugs, 
whereby just a mere suspicion of involvement with the usage and or selling of drugs got tens of thousands of people shot, killed, and imprisoned without even so much having any proof or going through trial. Many of those killed by mass vigilante gunmen or cops were children and the elderly who were innocent bystanders caught in a crossfire or simply shot by sheer mistaken identity. So what has this guy been doing during the pandemic? Well, out of all of the things that a leader ought to be doing in times of a pandemic like providing aid for healthcare, food, housing, and safety measures to mitigate and contain the spread of the virus, he's chosen to meet the people's cry for help with violence and repression. The ECQ or Enhanced Community Quarantine was more reminiscent of martial law than a pandemic lockdown, bolstering police and military funding and presence instead of investing and setting up a more capable healthcare system and supporting healthcare workers who face grave PPE shortages, left ill-equipped, getting sick themselves, and many dying of COVID-19. Amidst growing civil discontent, Dutai has even passed the anti-terror law, which was peddled as an anti-terrorism measure, but it's actually used to target and red tag anybody who is critical of him, who are openly vocal and actively protest his policies and blunders. This isn't only for individuals or groups of people, but institutions that criticized Dutai were also attacked and shut down like TV networks, ABS-CBN, and news outlets like Rappler, Bulatlat, the Catholic Media, and the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, which effectively killed freedom of the press. Using the increased police and military presence along with passing the anti-terror law has led to way more people being brutalized, arrested, and outright murdered than even the number of people being tested for the virus. The expanded police powers to arrest, detain, and brutalize people breaking the very strict ECQ measures gave crooked cops even more protection to operate without impunity. This created situations where cops routinely arrest, detain, and take advantage of young girls and women. In the tragic case of Fabel Pineda, a 15-year-old girl detained for supposedly breaking curfew on July 1, 2020, was raped while in the custody of police. On July 2, 2020, on her way home from the police station after filing a rape complaint against the cops that arrested her, she was gunned down by two masked men on a motorcycle and was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. This is but one instance of many similar cases in a land where the so-called leader Dotae normalizes rape culture and fascism. Despite the much boasted about 165.5 billion peso or 3.5 billion US dollar pandemic relief fund, people continue to receive little to no help from the government with many left jobless, desperate, starving, sick, and brutalized at the brink of death. Okay, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around. If you liked my take on an unboxing video, uh, please go on ahead and give this video a thumbs up and of course please do share, subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell for uh, videos like this in the future. One last thing, if you want to learn more why President Duterte is such a crappy president, um, do a Google search and you will find a shitload of uh, this guy's human rights abuses. Um, once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Hit that like button. Oh man, it's so late. I'm probably gonna sound and look like a zombie in this video or just plain high. Subscribe, share, and hit the note. Smash that like button. Okay. Subscribe, share, and hit the not notification bell for more unboxing drawing videos in the near future. Okay. Okay.